Okay. You've had a lot of intellectual lectures since since afternoon, so let's have some fun, yeah? <laughs> I see a lot of dietitians here now. Views. Like I first want to thank Dr. Rudul for giving me this opportunity to be sharing this lectern with such eminent uh, faculty. And um, we all know what is gestational diabetes. We've been listening to that. Uh, first, I want to see some hands who are still awake. All of us. All of you? Oh, wonderful. So, still listening, huh? still awake. Wonderful. Uh, Okay, so I'll straight away move on to gestational diabetes. We all know what is gestational diabetes, but prevalence of gestational diabetes in India is really high. It is increasing and um, it is now becoming so high that it is becoming a public health problem. Now, um, IDF has mentioned, has highlighted that one in every fourth birth not sixth, I don't know. I mean, we have all here uh, downstairs. I was listening to a lecture. He was saying that one in every seventh birth. So there is a difference in the global and the Indian digits. So in Indian digits, yes, one in every fourth birth is uh, affected by GDM. And um, the Wink study, the Biomedras uh, Diabetes Research Foundation, you all know, Dr. Mohan's uh, foundation, he added that there is no more difference in the rural and the urban population. And managing of gestational diabetes still remains a challenge. But So it is very important for us to be actually uh, screening the women, pregnant women, even though they are not showing any symptoms, right? So. Uh, if we have a confirmed diagnosis, let's say, then what we need to do is we need to understand, uh, sorry, if we have a confirmed diagnosis, then we need to basically uh, implement three things. One is um, the MNT, which is the medical nutrition therapy, then the physical activity, and of course, the uh, weight maintenance, okay? So what happens here in uh, basically the women who are pregnant is that they're very easily um, adaptable to the change. You know, they uh, very easily accept the change. So when you tell them that, okay, you uh, you might be having gestational diabetes, they'll, they'll be very happy to uh, make any sort of lifestyle changes that you want. And lifestyle modifications have shown that 70 to 85% of the women can be saved uh, uh, with the, you know, with the failure of uh, the uh, GDM. But in case we are not able to do so, because we are very time packed here. So you see, we have only two weeks of time to basically bring the woman down uh, from MNT and not going further to a um, physio this, uh, pharmacological treatment. Okay, so uh, in this time frame, when we tell her that she has to be pricking herself, like Dr. Rucha highlighted, that she has to be pricking herself, she would do. Like in normal scenarios, what they do is they would not accept in the first place that they have diabetes. The diagnosis and treatment is so difficult, the person would not accept in the first place. So medical nutrition therapy is described as carbohydrate meal plan. Okay, and uh, and this we aim at this one. So we aim at, uh, like I said, um, mother's uh, this thing, mother's weight maintenance. We also. Uh, want fetal health we also want we want to prevent nutritional ketosis okay so exercise however is very important and all the national and international guidelines have suggested that 30 minutes of exercise really helps now again uh, coming to the wing study wing study said that we can actually distribute this 30 minutes of exercise into 10 10 minutes uh, fractions throughout the day and that should be done post major meal so post major meal if the woman is exercising she can do walking she can do cycling and this really helps in bringing down the glucose levels or maintaining managing the glucose throughout the day um, i was in netherlands for some time and you won't believe how full term pregnant women were cycling and they were so active because they don't have any domestic help like we do <laughs> and we just you know um, be dependent on them well so if we have a case of uh, GDM if we have the confirmed diagnosis we need to understand what is her energy levels again the ICMR NIN 2020 guidelines suggest that we can add 350 calories in the second and the third trimester however in the first trimester we should not be adding any extra calories and we should not be letting the mother gain weight. So IOM, the um, Institute of Medicine also suggests that there should be no weight gain, uh, sorry, no weight loss. So 
we, we come back where that we have a very limited time frame of two weeks to bring her glucose levels in less than 95 and uh, the fasting glucose levels in less than 95 in just two weeks of implementing the MNT, right? Now, medical nutrition therapy, like I said, uh, we have to focus on the mother's health, the health of the womb, and we also want to make sure that she is getting 120, sorry, 175 grams of carbohydrates throughout the day, 70 grams of proteins, and around um, 25 to 40 grams of fiber throughout the day. When we are aiming at 25 to 40 grams of fiber per day, then we are basically talking about a whole food diet. A whole food diet is mostly misunderstood by people, mostly misunderstood by a layman because they will just see the packet and they will say, oh, it's a whole meal uh, bread or a whole food or a whole wheat sort of a thing, right? But when we say whole food diet, it should be as close to nature as possible. So whole food means a whole fruit. Let's take an example of wheat for uh, per se. Okay. So when the wheat is basically um, milk, right? So what happens is the bran is taken off. After the bran is taken off, we have endosperm and we have germ, right? Germ after germ oil, etc. is taken off. We have dalia, which is broken wheat. So broken wheat is low GI. Then what happens is that uh, suji is taken off, then wheat is taken off, then maida is taken off. So maida is wheat, uh, white flour and everybody knows that it is refined so we should not be having white bread etc etc. But what is wheat? Wheat is again the second stage of processing. So we should consider it as a processed food. So when we are giving a diet plan to a woman who is actually having a GDM, we need to tell her that, okay, let's, uh, you know, consider having low GI foods, which is a dalia per se, and leave the wheat flour behind, and or maybe suji uh, at some time, because that is again a medium GI food. We can easily modify our Indian traditional recipes in a way that we can, um, the simple roti, uh, which is a wheat roti, we can add protein and fiber to it by adding some gram flour, by adding some oats to it. So what, what did we do? Basically, we improved the postprandial glucose levels by adding more protein and by adding more fiber to the same chapatis, the same traditional recipe which she was having earlier. Okay, so we made it from high GI to a low GI food. When we are having a mother we, who actually is diagnosed, the counseling part is very important and making the mother aware of the carbohydrates is again very important. So what do we want to do? We want to tell her that okay, how you should be basically distributing your carbohydrates throughout the day is by having 15-15 grams of a carbohydrate snack let's say in the, in the evening and let's say um, two to three or three uh, parts in the morning and lunch and dinner should be uh, another three to four parts so let's say if i have to give her a snack in the evening i would prefer giving her two pieces of dokla or two pieces of idli or maybe just ask her to soak some chia seeds and have a yogurt or chia pudding right yes. this might seem very normal uh, talk to you guys because it is like everyday lecture for you right the dietitians here is it? You, you read it in your basic... Uh... Okay, so coming to the protein. Protein is extremely important. Why? Because it is uh, basically uh, responsible for the synthesis of not only the maternal tissues, the fetal and also the placental tissues. So protein is, should be the ICMR NIN guidelines suggest, the 2020 guidelines suggest 20 to 25 percent of protein should be there in the diet which comes out to be approximately 70 grams. Now, Indian women are very happy eating their roti sabjis and they don't want to add any proteins and, you know, they'll say, okay, ma'am, I had a bowl of dal, for example, or there may be sick days when they cannot have so much of food. So what do we need to do on those days is, like Dr. Rucha said, that we might want to give them a little protein powder or a little addition supplement on that, yeah? But... There are studies to prove and randomized uh, control trials to prove that carbohydrate, first of all, if we are having a, let's say, a low GI and a complex carbohydrate diet, that would be a better, uh, that would prove to be better glycemic control when uh, 
you know i mean uh, if the ppg is the ppg levels are controlled with a complex uh, this thing carbohydrate as compared to the restrictive carbohydrate diets when we are restricting the total amount of carbohydrates same goes for protein if we are giving them a lot of protein which is protein in every meal then we are eventually balancing or we are actually blunting the curve blunting the glucose spike right this is the most important slide so i'm actually uh, you know making it a little faster for you guys because we are already time packed here so the most important slide is the fat why i say that because nuts and seeds are basically very good sources of fiber antioxidants pufa mufa we all know that the saturated fats however how do they come into our plate in the form of ghee in the form of oil this oil in the form of palm oil the butter and everything but the trans fats the trans fats are there in fat food so i had a client and um, she was uh, in fact every woman should every pregnant woman should get a personalized diet plan uh, for that matter so she came to me and she said that i wanted a plan for uh, for myself so that there is a proper weight gain during the pregnancy so i gave her some yarn that okay you should be not be having all these packed foods and stuff like that she was very happy then she came for the next session when she came for the next session she tells me ma'am i'm not having any packed food no biscuits nothing but yes sometimes i want to snack on something so there is a bakery shop next to my house and i get fresh fried samosas from there freshly fried kachoris from there and i told her what are you doing you are basically having the trans fat which is the oil the uh, the guy was you know frying it throughout the day so it was basically converting into hydrogenated fat and you are consuming that just to save yourself from some packed food here so and uh, then comes the nin guidelines which suggest that okay 30 grams of fat is something that we should be having in visible form so visible 30 grams of fat when we tell them this is what we give them right we know these measuring spoons we give them the measuring spoons now they say 30 grams of fat this is 10 grams of fat so the 10 grams of fat when we give to them that okay this is the spoon that you should be using for your cooking and uh, stuff this itna to hum roti pe laga lete hain so this, this is what they should be do managing actually throughout the day in in their curries and their vegetables so this is the three spoons of this is what they should be visibly adding to their meals then when we say the fruit serving this is what we show to them that this is one fruit serving for a diabetic and this is how you can you know actually uh, measure it with your fist where uh, the tricky part goes is the rice this is one cup of rice one cup of cooked rice and they have much much more of it so when at the end of the day when they are actually controlling um, or sorry measuring their uh, glucose levels they say ma'am i don't know i'm eating everything that you are saying but still the glucose levels are not going down because i am giving you this much rice and you are eating a full plate of rice so the carbohydrates are increasing there so not only the quality the quantity the amount the digestion and the absorption of carbohydrates do matter eventually This is a sample diet plan which I give to my uh, clients, and if you see, it is basically covering the protein and the fiber in the morning. It is covering the standard meal plate that we should be considering when we say vegetables. It is covering a salad, which is again veggies. Then, then there is a lot of uh, fiber in the form of vegetables. There are studies like Dr. Rucha was saying, the protein shield, right? The protein shield is basically if I am having salad first. vegetables proteins then having the chapatis and rice then eventually i am blunting the uh, glucose spike so there are many studies to prove uh, this so what i've done here is given her lunch which is starting from a salad then a protein then a vegetable eventually i want her to have a rice and chapatis in the end and the evening snack is also again uh, balanced in a way that she is getting approximately 30 to 40 grams of carbohydrates in the evening snack so eat the rainbow that's what i tell everybody eat the rainbow is as much as colored fruits and vegetables as possible and good quality proteins now coming to supplements there b12 supplement is something that most of the people don't know and they don't know that b12 is something that they're not getting from diet at all so uh, deficiency of b12 vitamin the results presented here have shown no association 
between the maternal B12 concentration during the first trimester. However, low vitamin B12 concentrations in the second and the third trimester of pregnancy was related to an increased risk. Same goes for vitamin D. Some evidence has shown that vitamin D deficiency may increase the risk of GDM and there were several several studies on probiotics. When the probiotics uh, came into place, this is what I really wanted to highlight here, which is the nine clinical trials involving 1,053 participants were included in this meta-analysis and lactobacillus species were given to them. So the results showed that the probiotics significantly improved the glycemic control biomarkers, which, which is what we want, the fasting plasma glucose and the insulin sensitivity. Then the omega-3 supplements, again, omega-3 supplements can decrease the level of fasting plasma glucose and inflammatory factors, enhance blood lipid metabolism and reduce the insulin in patients with GDM. To conclude, lifestyle behavior interventions is the cornerstone management to ensure that the metabolic needs of pregnancy are met. We need normal glycemia, we need to avoid nutritional ketosis. Emphasis should be made on choosing the right type, amount, distribution of carbohydrates which is most important macronutrient uh, because that is what basically uh, affects the postprandial glucose spikes and the postprandial glucose levels and it, in addition the women with GDM are encouraged to indulge in moderate activity in moderate about 30 minutes like I said most important which I think almost all doctors have covered that postpartum follow-up for diabetes testing and lifestyle modification is crucial to prevent the delay progression of diabetes in future and of future generations. Thank you. I think I didn't see